hi lovelies welcome back to my channel today if you're here for the first time this is Cess fashion you're welcome and to my returning subscribers thank you so much for liking my videos thank you so much for sharing i really appreciate you so in today's class we're going to be learning how to take body measurements for our trouser or pants pattern i've got a lot of requests on how to take the body measurement for our pants and i find that a lot of you have issues on how to get the crotch line accurately and the crotch is a very important measurement in making trouser because that is what gives the fitting along this area so i'm going to be showing you three ways in which you can achieve a perfect and accurate crotch line make sure to watch to the end please like and share this video let's get right into it These are the measurements required in drafting a pants pattern and here we have the horizontal and the vertical measurements. The horizontal measurements are the circumference around the body while the vertical measurements are the measurements along your body. For the horizontal measurement, we first of all need the waist circumference which is divided into four. Secondly, we need a hip circumference and this also should be divided into four. For the tie measurement, we'll be dividing that into two and also the knee will be divided into two as well as the ankle. For the vertical measurement, we'll be taking the crotch depth, the hip length, the knee length, the ankle length as well as the floor length. With all this being explained, let's get straight to taking the measurements on the body. To get started, we'll first of all take the waist circumference and to do that, we have to take note of the waistline of our pants next thing you need to know how pants are categorized based on their rise what is the pant rise is this basically the distance from the waist to the cross seam and there are three types we have the low rise the mid rise and the high rise i'm going to leave a screenshot here explaining clearly what the difference is and also what it looks like so basically the low rise sits two inches below the navel while the mid rise sits just below the navel and the high rise sits on or above the navel this is also what some people call the low and high waist pants so while measuring your client it is very important to ask where they would prefer the waist of their trousers to sit so while measuring you can ask questions like please do you prefer the waist of your pants high or low because after determining that that is where you are going to be taking all your measurements from all your vertical measurements is going to be taken from that waistline so here with me is my model which i'll be using for demonstration and you can see the way she's standing she's standing upright her face is facing forward and not looking down she's not posing like she's taking a picture so this is how i intend your client to start while taking measurements so like i said the first thing is to locate where the waistline is going to be so i'll be using this tape here to mark that out and for me i like my pants high waist so i'm going to mark this i'm going to tie this around the belly button after marking this out the next thing i'll be taking the round waist circumference and to do that i'll be putting my tape here firmly making sure that it's not too tight please i do not ask you to choke your client make sure that it is firm and not too tight so after taking the waist measurement the next thing i'll be taking the hip circumference and to do that i'll wrap this here make sure that your tape can move all around the hip with ease like so and after taking this the next thing is to take the tie circumference and to do that i'm going to be marking just one leg for the tie like so like this and next is the knee circumference and this is zit after taking the knee the next thing is to take the ankle and to do that make sure that it's free enough so that by the time we want to put on and take off the pants it's not going to be too tight so make sure you add that freeness while taking your ankle measurements 
So that is basically it for the horizontal measurement. We have the waist, the hip, the tie, the knee, and the ankle. You can also decide to take the calf as well, depending on the kind of trouser you are making. To do that, you can just place your tape here and take your calf measurement. Moving over to the vertical measurement, the next thing we are going to measure now is the crotch and that is the crotch line. And to do that, like I said, I'm going to show you three ways to achieve an accurate crotch line. The first method is the crotch depth. The second method is the crotch length. And the third method is the inseam. So I'm going to bring back my model to demonstrate what each of these crotch measurements mean. Now for the first crotch measurement, which is the crotch depth. You're going to ask your client to sit on a flat surface like this. Make sure that it's a flat surface and not a cushioned surface. So once she's seated, you're going to place your tape on this waistline, which is your desired waist point. You're going to place your tape down to meet the flat surface, like so. For me here, I have 11 inches and this is the crotch depth. Now for the second metal, which is the crotch length, I'm going to place my tape at this waistline here and I'm going to pass it in between the legs all through to the back like so as you can see so right here I have 25 inches as my crotch length so it's very important for you to tie something on your waist to indicate the waistline in the front and also the waistline at the back so to get your accurate crotch length so i'm going to be showing you how to calculate this to get your accurate crotch length after measuring our crotch length from front to the back we had a total of 25 inches now we're going to divide that into two and that equals 12.5 now to make the front crotch measurement we're going to take that 12.5 and we're going to subtract one inch making it 11.5 inches and then for the back crotch measurement, we're going to take the remaining half, which is 12.5, and we'll add one inch to that, making it 13.5 inches. So when I add together 11.5 plus 13.5 inches, I end up with 25 inches, which is exactly where I started from. So what that did is it gave two inches more to the back of the body than the front of the body. One of the disadvantage why I don't like using this method is because there are some people that actually have a protruding tummy and if you use this method, it's going to be misleading. And also, I'm not always comfortable measuring my client this way because can you imagine I tell you like, can you please open your legs? I want to pass the tape through it. Like it's somehow so using this method is quite complicated especially if you're a beginner i would advise you to use the crotch depth method it is easy and it is very straightforward now the third method is to measure the difference between the out seam and the in seam to do that for the out seam you're going to measure the outer part of your leg that is from this waistline you're going to measure down to the floor length. Now take note that it doesn't matter the kind of um, pants you're making, whether it's a short, three quarter or ankle length pants. Just take your measurement from the waist down to the floor length. And for her hair, I have 41 inches. After getting that, I'm going to measure the inseam, which is the inner part of the leg, just from this crotch point here. I'm going to measure down to the floor length. And here I have 30 inches. So now to get the inseam, I'm going to subtract 30 from 41, which gives 11 inches. So for her using the inseam method, her crotch depth is 11 inches. So if I want to draft my pattern, now the waistline is going to be my starting point. And from that starting point, I'm going to measure down 11 inches, which is going to be my crotch line. So hope you understand how to get your crotch line. Among these three metals which I've mentioned, the crotch depth and the inseam is very straightforward and accurate to some extent. So you can choose whichever one you find useful for you. And also another method you can use if you do not have your client's crotch measurement at hand is 
to divide your hip measurement by four. This actually gives a mid-rise pants. So for someone that prefers a high waist pants, all you have to do is to divide your hip measurement by four and then add one inch to it. That works fine. And also for someone that likes a, a low waist pant, all you have to do is divide your hip measurement by four and then subtract one from it. That also works fine. Now the next vertical measurement we'll be looking at is the hip length. And to do that, we'll place our tape right here and measure down to the hip point, like so. And then the next one is the knee length. And to do that, we're going to measure down to just about two inches above the knee, right here. This is the knee length. And then for um, pants that are going to be ankle length, we're going to measure the ankle down like so. And for um, pants like palazzos and the ones that are going to be flowing, we're going to measure down to the floor length. So now we've come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, you can leave it down in the comment section and make sure to like, share, and please, I'm begging you, subscribe to my channel. See you in my next tutorial.